Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope that you are enjoying yourself and uh, performing the celebration of Ashura, which is the 10th of Muharram. Uh, it is the day where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Moses and the children of Israel from Pharaoh. Uh, and it was a big, big, big sign, as and maher, for the production of this idea. Uh, this is, has been imagined by some uh, artists, the, the, the journey of the children of Israel with Moses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, instructed Moses to uh, strike with his stick the sea so they can be saved. They were saved. The story of Moses is not only for Muslims, it's for everybody. He was one of the greatest change maker of humanity. That's why the big link between him and the change project. When you talk the all the children of Israel, the Israelites, to Sinai, they still didn't follow him and they worshipped the golden calf. Anyway, this is a different story. So, on Ashura, we remember this story and we remember also the martyrdom of Hazrat Hussain and we hope that our Shia brothers will find a way to reunite or to unite the whole Ummah and to let all of us to uh, not talk about the differences but talk about the common things amongst us. So we were sad to remember what happened to the family of the Prophet Sallallahu and happy to remember what happened that Allah Subh'ana saved Musa Alayhi Salaam. Change, change, change. Every young man and woman would like to make a change. Would like to make a change. Uh, Ahmad Sheikh has brought about 10 or 15 questions for me to answer, for you to answer, for us to answer, okay? Before we make or we think that we would like to make a change, we have to ask ourselves this question. What do you mean by the change project? What do you mean? You want to change your clothes? You want to change your blanket, your mattress? What do you mean by the change project? You have to understand what you are heading for. Number two, do you believe in such a project or we are in doubt of it? Yani change is a long-term process. Do you believe that we can go through this long-term process or we are in doubt of it? Number three, is the idea of change clear before all of us or not? Are we aware of its aims, objectives, message, mission, values, and principles. We have to be aware that the idea of change has got aims, objective, message, mission, values, and principles. Is that clear for us or not? Okay. Number four, can we spend, here is the sacrifices, can we spend our time, our effort, our, our money on it and for it or not? Some people would like to make the change without spending any effort or money. You can't make the change. Number five, are we confident in our success? Do we have assurance that we will succeed or not? See, when we look at it, we remember a say by the Prophet Sallallahu when the Qurashayit went to his uncle, and told him that you can give him the money, the wealth, the most beautiful woman, everything, the prestige, everything, everything, everything. He was sure that he's going to succeed. And he has the assurance from Allah. You know what he said? Wallahi am, oh Allah, oh my uncle, with the name of Allah, if they put the sun in my, if they put the sun in my right hand, and the moon of my left hand to leave such a message of change, I will never leave it. So he was so confident in the success and have the assurance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Number six, what are our available? We have to look at our resources. Maybe human resources. Maybe materialistic resources. Maybe theological resources. Maybe intellectual resources. All these resources. We have to look at it and calculate it. Number seven, what skills we need to make that change? You can't get somebody to play football and he's overweight. Or to run a race, okay, 200, 200, 500, 1,000 meter, and he is overweight. We never win. Okay, skills we have. You might need to have different kind of skills in the change makers. Some people will be able to analyze. Some people will be able to, be, to make policies. Some people become visionary. Some people become executives to execute the, uh, the workers. Some people will, will, will be able to uh, put different political dimensions. All this. Some people become economical, social, all these skills that we need to have. Some people become very good in the media, and art, and communication skills, all this. What skills we need to have to make sure that we succeed? Number eight, what are the challenges and risks we could face? At any process of change, there's a lot of risk. Even a lot of prophets could not be able to end their mission with the success they wanted to have. Some of them will come to meet Allah on the Day of Judgment with nobody believing him or with the handful or with the thousands or with the hundreds or the hundreds of thousands or not all of them managed to succeed in their mission as they wanted. But they have done their duty. What risks they have faced? Torture, punishment, uh, 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 killing the Zakaria and Yahya alayhim salam both of them were killed okay imprisonment like Yusuf alayhi salam stoning like Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in, in Ta'if okay and all those prophets of Allah uh, the, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, and Namrud wanted to throw him in, in fire but Allah changed the fire into a cool place for himself and so on this is a risk because the people in the establishment in such societies are against the change itself. Immigration, migration, disbursement for community, and all these sort of things. You have to realize before you drive the community, you lead the community, you have to know the consequences and the risks that this such community will face. What are the tangible results and benefits that we can see from such a project? We have to be realistic. Short term, medium term, and long term. And in the short term, you have to get tangible results for people. In the medium and long term, you have to be trusted by the community that you'll be able to lead them to the longer term process uh, uh, road of change. Number 10, what are the policies, tools, stages required to implement such a change? In any project of the change or change project, this, we should have our policies, we should have our tools, we should have our principles clear for everybody. Clear for now, These questions, my young brothers and sisters, have to be asked, have to be answered before you start to become emotional and jump up in the air and or become depressed and withdrawn and answer all of them. So what do, what do you mean by change? Do you believe in such a project or not or have doubt? Is the idea of change clear for us? Are we aware of its aims, objective, message, mission, values and principles? Can we spend our time, effort and money for it? Are we confident of our success and have the assurance what are our available resources, scales needed, okay, risks and challenges, tangible results, 
and policies, tools, stages of implementation. Change is not going to happen overnight. You have to phase it out. You have to make a, uh, a plan. Then you have to make a roadmap. And you have to stage the roadmap. Year, five, seven, ten, whatever it is, according to what you want. These are the questions to ask ourselves as young men and women. Stages of change, we know that the most important stage is the initial stage of the idea itself. Do I have the idea? Can we structure the idea? Can we build the idea? Do we believe in the idea of change? Then after that, I have to rally a handful or a dozen of people around me to have the same belief in the idea. We will structure it and phase it. Because each idea is not just an idea. It has to be structured. It has to be built in. It has to be in, in, entrenched in our hearts and souls and our mind. So first of all, do you have the idea of change? Yes, we do. Do you believe in it? Yes, we do. So we have to collect a group of people to believe in such idea. Then we'll go from that to get the people who are in a state of illusion to the state of disillusion. Awaken them up. Tell them, wake up. Wake up from your deep sleep. Wake up from your coma. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This number three. When they wake up, you have to make them aware. First of all, this illusion, then awakening. Awareness is one of the most difficult tasks against any change maker. Facing any change maker. Facing any community. And this is the real message of the prophets. Yes, one God. Do you, do you trust him when he, when he brings the news uh, uh, that he's gone to Isra and Mi'raj? Yes, we trust him because he brings every other day or every week or every month or every other day a news from Allah, from Sama. This was the level of awareness of Abu Bakr and the level of Iman Abu Bakr and the level of awareness and the Iman of others. So soon we take the people from the state of illusion we make them aware because they wake up now and they can see, they can look around. Difficult, 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 but we have to face it. Number five, reassurance. Once we went for this four, we'll be able to do the community to build the Renaissance and build the civilization. Agents of change. Okay. First, point is to build the critical mass or the change mass as we call it how we build such a mass in a stable democratic society it will go through education through advocacy program provided by the government this is clear if we are living in a democratic free country this could be done easily through education advocacy a community work, and so on, so on, so all these kind of things. But if, on the opposite side, the society is not open, is not democratic, is autocratic, is dictatorship, so how can we build such a critical mass? The more you face challenges throughout natural disasters or an armed conflict zones, this will unveil the selfish, hypocritical individuals from among us, the community leadership. The more we face challenges, the more we see the difference between the honest people and the other people. But only in conflict zones and in the natural disasters. Because they become opportunists. Number two, uh, number, uh, two the rise of new social awareness from what? People living under dictatorship regime, not only during the disaster, but people in dictatorship regime are oppressed. But that does not mean that they cannot think to build this 
uh, critical mass or the mass of change. No, they think to build it and they are building it individually or collectively because of the, of the uh, uh, iron fist uh, dictator, dictation, uh, the dictatorship against them. Number three, the use of excessive force. The more excessive force we use to suppress people, the more people will be aware, the more people will be able to become an individual in the critical mass, the more people will be able to create this kind of critical mass. Disasters, armed conflict, dictatorship regime, using excessive force. Number five, or number four, number five is learning from others' experience. Yes, you have to look at different countries or different societies. How did they create their critical mass? Or how did their critical mass succeeded to make the change? Number uh, six is learning from the fellow citizens. You see, in, in countries nowadays in the world, it, there's a lot of citizens have immigrated to the west or to the east. They have gained different experience. From such individuals, you can build the critical mass. So critical mass is either in a democratic society, we mentioned it, or in a non-democratic society, it comes from the challenges of dictatorship, the challenges of the disasters and the armed conflict, the challenges facing them from use of excessive force, and the challenges of le learning from different societies and from citizens living outside the country. This is how can we uh, build the critical mass or the mass of change or the change mass. So after the critical mass, such a critical mass has to be interacting positively and serving the local and the surrounding community. Okay, after the critical mass, what is the role of the critical mass? To interact with the surrounding communities. To serve the surrounding community. Number three, such a critical mass has to agree on a simple, clear vision to be adopted by different members of the critical mass and being understood by different community members. Such a critical mass or mass of change or change mass have to agree on a simple and a clear vision to be adopted by different members of such a critical mass and not only that, but being understood by different community members. Number four, such a critical mass has to stage the implementation plan into different timelines and geographical zones. You cannot do it just like this. To stage it in different stages and to adopt it geographically according to the culture of each community living in such a place. Number five, building coalition and partnership with different uh, social masses. Number six, trying to remove all the obstacles, which is the most difficult one, trying to remove all the obstacles in front of the critical mass, and this is the most difficult one. Because that means that you have to sacrifice your time, your effort, your money, sometime your life, everything. And this is how this is difficult before you go to, through this process of change. We have some advice to the youth, as, Abd, as Ahmad al-Sheikh was putting it for me. Young men and women, you want to make the change? Let us talk about what do you mean by change. Change is the only constant thing happening in our society every hour, every day, and every year. Why we live on the planet Earth. Change is the only constant thing happening in our society every hour, every day, and every year why we live on the planet Earth. If we want to make the change and become the change makers, we have to adopt the following. We have to adopt the following. First of all, learning and benefiting from social knowledge and experiences. Learning, 
keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, keep understanding, keep listening, keep hearing before you start talk, keep thinking. Okay, understanding and realizing the root cause of the social problem. We cannot just identify the symptoms of the problem and respond into it. But we have to identify the root causes of such problem and trace the root causes of such problems. So That's what we call it needs assessment. Number three, having a clear and transparent message without raising public expectation. When we talk to the public, our message should be simple, clear, and transparent, and never ever raise the expectation of the public. Never ever raise the expectation of the public. Number four, our program should become simple, clear, and phased on stages. Simple and clear, because you would like to attract the public to follow such a program, or to believe in such a program, or trust your leadership. Number five, following the no exclusion policy. Never, ever, to think for a split of a th second to exclude somebody from being a part of the process of change. Never ever think that the ownership of your community, your society, your country belongs to certain groups, belongs to certain family, belongs to certain political uh, uh, party, or belongs to certain uh, 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 religious group or race, every citizen living on such a land of such a society or such a country has the right to become an owner of his country or her country, her society or his society, or his community and her community. No exclusion policy. Putting parameters and procedures to review the process every chair of the change. We're going to just keep going without stopping and thinking what we have been achieving or failing at. We have to review our process of change every now and then to evaluate the success and the failure of the program. Number seven, look at ourselves. Look at our manners, our behaviors, our social transparency. We cannot come out to the people saying something and we are hiding something else from them. No. Our manners, our behavior, our social transparency of different members of the critical mass. Building coalition, definitely. No change will happen without building coalition with other social masses. Building coalition and partnership with different social powers. Being patient. Showing perseverance, dedication, determination, and motivation huh? to become a part of the character of the individual. Each individual in the, inside the mass of change, the change mass or the critical mass, should be patient, showing perseverance, dedication, determination, and motivated. Number 10, being flexible when you implement your strategic plan. It's not a Quran. Even the, the tafsir or the explanation of the meaning of the Quran in, explained differently by different scholars in different countries and different times. And your strategic plan is not Quran. It is ijtihad, it is some opinion of the uh, members of the critical mass to, which can be discussed and reviewed. So when you, the, the, the situation has become different, you have to change your approach. When the political climate in the neighborhood become different, you have to look back at your strategic plan. When the global climate become different, you have to look back at the strategic plan. Being flexible in implementation of the program and open for strategic change if necessary. Number 11, no rush to pick up the non-ripening fruits or being deceived by unrealistic, attractive, false promises from those who were against social change before. Be careful of those people. Number 12, which is extremely important, try to find the deep states within your states, within your country. There's too many deep states. 
There is no state on earth that does not have deep states. Even the most democratic, open society still have deep states. Shrinking because of the power of democracy, the power of freedom, freedom, the power of civil society organization, expanding if the, if the civil liberty space is shrinking and become a non-existent. The last one, which is not the least, is building effective civil society sector and civil society organization. These are the advices to my young men and women when they want to make the change. Do we have critical mass or change mass in our community? Yes, we do. But sometimes we have them in the form of individuals who are trying to make the change or individuals who are who believe in the change but failing to make the change or individuals who believe in the change but are afraid to discuss the change with anybody. Those three quality, uh, 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 characteristic or quality of people are inside all the societies, whether it's democratic or non-democratic society. My last question. Did we succeed? Yes, we succeeded. Let me tell you about the journey of the last 35 years in the West. There was no humanitarian organization, charitable organization in the West, who started 35 years ago. Now there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in America, in Canada, in Europe. Take 35 years. Number two, we used to have uh, we used to have during Ramadan a project called Caravan Tour to go from a town to a town and sit in the UK for the whole month of Ramadan to sell books to mosques who did not have any bookshop. Nowadays, every mosque have a bookshop and every city have many bookshops. In the good old days, only London has all this. This happened in 35 years. Islamic Cliff Games or the Games started in 1988-89 as an idea to attract many people, players, football, kabaddi, table tennis, volleyball, uh, basketball, uh, what else, uh, cricket, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, tacro. Nowadays, in 2018, after 30 years, at every city, there are football tournament, a table tennis tournament. There are, there are, there are. But it took the community 30 years to make that change. Halal food or halal meat shops. We used to travel from Wales, Swansea, not Swansea, uh, Aberystwyth, to Wolverhampton every weekend or every second weekend to buy sheep and, and goat and uh, lamb to go back with it and to divide it for the community because there was no other. Now every corner at every town and every city of UK, not only of UK, but of, of Europe and America have the halal food shop. Muslims in the local municipality and in the House of Lords and in the House of Common and in the ministerial places and in the, the mayor of London. So this took the community 40, 50 years so we succeeded. To conclude, if you want to make a change, you have to be patient, dedicated, committed, visionary, spending your time, your effort, your money, your thoughts to make the change. Believing that you are owned by the community, not you own the community. You work for the community, not for yourself. Becoming transparent as an individual, as a collective, as well as as a family. Also being able to build partnership and coalition of others. Becoming modest, modest, modest. Even if this will mean that you should not become the leader of the change, but become a member of the change making process. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Ashura mubarakah. I hope that all of you will make a dua for us today when you break the fast. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.